Hi guys, welcome to KSP TV and I am going to say not, you know, not like beautiful, gorgeous, stunning but one badass mom who I met today <laughs> because she is such a chiller and she is uh, so imperfectly perfect which is what I love about her and uh, Samira Reddy, thank you for doing this with us. Thank you for, ha for having me. Yeah, um, Samira, I definitely am a person who believes that, you know, everything that we're doing today is somewhere that's come through us from the way we were raised and there's something that's got to be you know with our childhood growing up years that kind of reflects on how we're you know the decisions that we're taking the conversations that we're having so Mira how long has it been three weeks three weeks three and, and she's she's so <laughs> brave so unfiltered like I just cannot believe that she's such a chiller and she's like so candid and uh, so I'm like I don't know how she's sitting here <laughs> chilling and spending time and she's got everything by the routine, no help, like yeah. no help at all. It was a disaster because on the first day I came back from the hospital and I had a nurse, a very fancy one, <laughs> but in the night I was waking her up, okay, I was like, oh, I think the baby's <laughs> crying, she's like, ah, ah, ah. And I was like, next day gone, then I got a jhapa, you know, one of the Bengali jhapas. Yes. And then she started telling me exactly how I started to do things and you know and the best part she was like don't feed in front of you know uh, your like everybody in terms of yeah. my family and I was just appalled and I was like yeah. this is not what I want to do yeah so she went and now it's been three weeks and we've stopped looking for people and I just had no help yeah <laughs> yeah so I don't know if this is a call that if anybody has a really good baby nurse <laughs> Or a nanny, Samira needs one. I mean, honestly, <laughs> now I've gotten to the groove yeah. and I just prefer not having anyone around. It's yeah, it's odd. just less stressful. It is less stressful, you yeah. know, and uh, I feel, of course, I mean, in my social life's gone for a toss, as all of us do. Yeah. But yeah, but it's not that bad. We're going to talk about, um, you know, her delivery, her fabulous shoot and how she did it like I don't know how she did it but she's gonna spill the beans on her <laughs> underwater shoot and about uh, getting onto social media like six months ago yes literally and of course her her you know her campaign which is simply uh, it, unperfect it's imperfectly, imperfectly perfect, perfect. Yeah. right uh, which is which is brilliant because I'm so I'm so proud and happy that finally somebody has voiced it. Somebody's had the courage. I mean, body positivity has to be spoken about. It's right. ridiculous. We all struggle, we all suffer with this. Right. We need to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the whole fact that you've kind of spoken about it come out especially because you're always papped, you're always under scrutiny, you're yeah. always being watched. Oh my god, the bump is so big, the thigh is so big, she's put on so much weight. How do you deal with all of this? Like, and how is the time where you had Hans, your your oh, son, you're now who's how yeah, old? Yeah, he's four. He's four to so, your baby. Yeah, how's it changed? So actually, when I got in a nutshell, when I got pregnant with Hans, uh, um, it was my most happening time. Okay, I was like, <laughs> when I say happening in my head, it was happening. I was like, award shows, sex, eh? you know, like all these hot dresses, very with it. Yeah. Uh, very glam in my head. And I say glam in my head because the way I realized it was very hollow mm. because the minute I got pregnant with Hans, I had a lot of issues, I put on a lot of weight, I had placenta previa, lying on this bed actually, not being able to move, constantly eating and depressed, put on a lot of weight, I put on 32 kgs, yeah. 32. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I thought I, I thought nobody <laughs> could beat my 22 but she's outdone me. I beat everybody, okay, I became massive. and. I'm laughing about it now, uh, but I can tell you I was broken. Mm. I felt really bad about myself. And that moving from that, you know, avatar of what I thought I was uh, to where I moved into and what I moved into, it just, it was a dichotomy. I think I really like couldn't handle it. And then I went into a shell. I went completely quiet and I couldn't get back out. And that's why I went quiet after Hans. I refused to talk to social media. I remember getting papped that time. Like, oh my God, she's like, what happened to her? And I called up uh, that particular magazine and I said, why have you, do you done this? I said, take it off. And then I realized I can't control them. So yeah. I just don't want to go out. Yeah. So I didn't step out. I didn't step Was out. Was it hard? Like, how do you pull yourself? Like, I know, I know nobody has ever spoken about this, but there is so much pressure on you guys, yeah. right? How do you, like, when people tell you, oh, she's, and you've always got like, oh, she's so hot, or she's so good looking, like, how do they do it? And then you suddenly yeah. get so much flack as well. 
It's how do you ask how do you for it, right? I yeah. mean, look, today we put out ourselves out there to be scrutinized. Yeah. And it's it's both are playing with yeah. this this little game of you know we're putting it out there, people are liking it, we're putting more, they're liking it more. So suddenly, if you if I decide to like say hey don't don't look at me that way because I put on weight now, I mean somewhere it's yeah, wrong it's, it's also. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm putting myself out there as an actress. Right. So that was my only thing, which was like okay I can't handle it. I need to step out. Because the truth is that people can be really mean, mm-hmm. and when I was uh, when I gave birth to Hans in my first year, I stayed that hundred and two kgs, guys. I stayed that big, and I couldn't go beyond it. And I would just breastfeed, eat more, get depressed, look at myself, freak out, eat more. It became like a really a cycle. vicious cycle, and no one could get me out of it. Yeah, except myself. It took me two years. Yeah. to actually muster up the courage i could not even take my child out in a pram because somebody would come and say is you know kya ho gaya aapko yeah so uh, my husband was very supportive my family was extremely supportive but it took me a good 2 to 3 years of therapy you know i took a bit of counseling and i have to say that coming back with this pregnancy the reason i am so confident not even confident it's like i'm i'm hungry and i'm thirsty to not like let other people get other sucked people into get sucked sucked absolutely into the <laughs> absolutely tell yeah. me like, of course there was so much anxiety because yeah. you were not on social media before because yeah. i think social media can either uplift you or can really put you down so contrary to what people feel like oh other people's lives are so beautiful no, it's a it's a major looks, it's major for more yeah it yeah. is and um so when i was not obviously on instagram all these yeah. years And six months ago, I mean, before that, I did try a little bit, and every time I try, I'd see an actress put up this perfect picture, you know, chiseled, that look. Yeah. I don't know what all, like, you know, is yeah. put up there, and I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. I said I can't do this. You know, I used to get psyched, and uh, people would be like, Oh, you have to get on, and you have to reach one million followers. I'm like, But why? Yeah. I mean, and then I understood this whole game of everybody's worth. Hmm. You know, something as ridiculous as that. that these big brands will send you big hampers when you have certain numbers and then you're part of the cool club yeah you know how you that did that anxiety and you rub off some you know like just, never like oh my god she's talking about this brand oh my god she's got this campaign oh my god no, it it didn't. never did not it never now not now maybe but back then but back yes. then i was a wreck back then i can tell you i'd look at a bomb times picture and i'd first say oh my god it's such a bad angle and i'd feel bad about it and I'm, i mean for ridic for heaven's sake it's just one picture in mm. the paper for that particular day and i would let it get to me to a point where i'd feel down yeah and that's what happened this time when i came back i came back my way mm. which was this is me i don't look good all the time i swell i have water retention i cry i get depressed yeah uh and i wish that and i don't have nurses no and i don't i don't have that <laughs> even nurses you know And and not only that, I think that um, I wish somebody did that for me that yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. I wish somebody stood up and said, Samira, you know what? Embrace your flaws. Yeah. But I had people saying, Don't worry. To weight lose करेगी, सब ठीक रहेगा और तू सेक्सी वापस बन के वापस कम बैक करेगी. This yeah. was the line. Yeah. You can come back, but you have to be that Samira again. Yeah. My thing was, I'll come back, but I'll come back as I am now. Yeah. We all are. different versions of ourselves and that's why imperfectly perfect happened it happened because a journalist came and told me will you become sexy like karina kapoor or will you stick to your like hold on to your weight yeah. like aishwarya rai yeah that's what triggered me off wow because i was like who first of all gives you the right to talk about aishwarya rai or even karina kapoor in yeah. that way yeah both have are amazing mothers yeah. yes one came back super sexy one took time You can't compare me to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. It's not right. Yeah. And that's why imperfectly perfect happened because I wanted mothers to know, dude, we're in this. It's really tough. Yeah. And and you did it without any makeup, yeah. any corrections, no, all of that. No. So how did that campaign happen? So uh, I wanted to do underwater shots. Hmm. For first of all, I did a few shots on the beach when I yeah. went on a holiday with my husband and my son, and then I started getting trolled for it. They start telling me, oh, you know, why are you showing a bump? Huh. The bump is so ugly. Like, you know, like this was some of the words wow. the guys used to use, and it 
actually fueled me more. Like I was like, really? You think I shouldn't be showing my bum? Hell, let's do it. Let's do it. it. She's, she's, <laughs> I, I don't get her because she's quite the rebel as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just wanted to, and I did the underwater shots for myself. Yeah. But when we did it, it was so empowering, you know, just to, uh, to arc my body and to like, you know, show like this different uh, side of me and to embrace the fact that I had back fat and I had chubby thighs mm. and a chubby face, but I could still embrace it and feel good about it. That was, it's a real release, guys. So how did you it's do that? Release. Like everybody wants to know, like, so it wasn't Photoshop at nothing, all. Nothing, nothing. How long were you underwater? Hardly. Each time was five to maybe five to six seconds. It okay. was, but it was each shot was going down, sinking in, doing my shot and coming out. So it was in, out, in, out. It was constantly. I must have. I still have the tan. Oh. So it's like that was about forty days ago, and I still have this really black tan on my body. It's like I literally yeah. sat in the water for so long. <laughs> but uh, but tell me when. So from. From the first time until now, how has so we've spoken about you know how you've how you bounced back, how about the campaign, about the anxiety. But tell me now that you're on social media, what is Samira's way of posting out what she wants to post, but not letting it, not letting things impact you? Um, and how does one do that? Because I'm sure no, everybody on the gram yeah. today gets impacted, and but I think anybody who's not who's not admitting to it. Must be really... No, it's not that. I'll tell you what it is. Sometimes I do get a little, like, I get shocked. Sometimes, especially when people comment some ridiculous stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I did a, a post recently about celebrating failure. And this yeah. happened because of uh, that certain suicide case, yeah. you know, with, yeah. uh, with, uh, off that bridge. And it really unnerved me because I was thinking somewhere deep down, I said, I have to talk about the fact that I thought I failed. Mm. Okay, guys, I thought I failed because I lost my sense of self and I became fat. In my head, I actually use the word, I have failed myself. And I think that's wrong because we need to celebrate failure, right? Yeah. I f somewhere, it is failure that has pushed me to come into this confident sense of self. Mm. Mm. So we all fall down. And then I had people, you know, sending me messages like, yeah, just because you failed doesn't mean you think you should celebrate it. I mean, and in my head, I was like, what? I mean, are these people mad? Yeah. Because what I'm trying to explain to you is that we all fail at some level. Yeah. At any point. It could be an exam. It could be at a marriage. It could be with our bodies. And people really say the most ridiculous stuff. Yeah. But you know what I always do? I always like what they say. So sometimes, you know, if somebody wants to be hurtful, I actually like the comment. And then you realize how shallow you were. Yeah, and yeah. it's not for any reason, because I can't change anybody. Yeah. And that's the most important thing, you can't change anybody. No, but I also, I completely agree with you that sometimes when we fail, when you rise from that failure... It's amazing. Nobody will be able to break you again, and I think that no, is so important. you will be broken again. Yeah, but would not in that, not but a different, different sort of, different, uh, different reason, different. right? That yeah. reasoning will be different, because... When you've emerged, yeah. you've emerged so much stronger and I, and I can't believe if people haven't had failures. I don't know if you're living no, that's the perfect said, see, even life. Even as mothers, right, since we yeah. are here and it's Kids Stop Rest, I have to say as mothers, we are constantly comparing ourselves. Yeah. There are certain moms who are like, you know, have it all and they're like, oh, do they have it all? No, they don't. Nobody has it all. And you constantly second guess yourself. Yeah. Am I aging? Am I fat? Am I skinny enough? Am I called to that per that particular event? Do yeah. I have the right clothes? Do I have the right car? Am I the right mother? Am I fitting into that school, uh, you know, the mommy oh, group? Man. The mommy group. Yeah. Scary, scary group, by the way. <laughs> 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 because I, you know, I haven't got there yet. But I'm saying that anxiety is self-made. It's self-inflicted. And that's where maybe I feel a sense of release. And I would love to share it with you all. Where I tell you all, please let go. Because the amount we of importance we give situations and other people, or you know this this thing of judge being judged or wanting validation. Validation is like a bad word in my head. I am so done with it. I'm like I don't care what you all think. I'm enjoying myself. You don't need that validation. Yeah. You know, as moms, we're already doing such a damn great job. Yeah. True. You, you know, so so. But tell me, how do you do it? Like, I want to. I would really want to know. So if 
you see something and it does impact you what do you say to yourself and pull yourself away okay, from that you situation you have to let it you have to let it pass so my thing but is in that passing phase you're you are miserable samira no no so even when you're miserable you have to just at that moment say okay it is really bothering me but you have to actually think you're giving the power to that situation or the person you know i've had many hurtful things slung at me but i don't give it that importance because the minute you empower that person or that situation the power is not with them it's with you i mean you're in control yeah. so if somebody says you're fat it's their insecurities it's them demeaning you it's their problem not yours yeah you know you're still sort of in the situation and there are people around you like i often feel there are times when you know either i'm not being able to manage work and home or whatever and i feel like the anxiety of one place kind of rubs off onto the other so you know how much ever you want to control you're still so going to let wrong. people affect you can't control yeah that's why i always say when i say stay in that situation yeah. and let go you have to be mindful yeah like there are so many times i'm telling you i'm so stressed out new baby my son husband saying something i'm trying to do a live with kids talk dress yeah. <laughs> i'm like you know like this so it is there's that moment and i always stop and sometimes i just go to the bathroom and cry yeah i cry i cry so much my god because my hormones are all over the place yeah. right now and in general i'm a very hormonal chick so <laughs> i cry to just release yeah i just release yeah. and you release it you come back out feel better think re-strategize and reactivity right. is something that you can control so what i'm trying to say is i'm not saying that you you can control situations yeah. but you can at least be mindful about yeah. your reactivity to it true you know true. that's then then make your comeback true yeah. how was samira as a child and what do you think were the biggest takeaways from back then to what you're doing today so i have to say as a child believe it or not uh, i was really plump i used to stammer a lot i was a very scared kid and um, i just felt uh, people were constantly judging me because i had two really sexy sisters i mean hot sisters so the combination was lethal and i wasn't in a very good space in my teens and as a child i always felt like okay i have to break through and come out and do something but could i be able to do it so that negative uh, thought uh, process actually propelled me into pushing myself into doing something big uh, and now when i look back i think that we are a product of our environments good or bad uh, it helped me get here but now i have to work a lot to break all those notions in my head because uh, self worth doesn't come from just pushing and getting success and trying to make up for the fact that you had a childhood which was you know not as glammed up as you think you know maybe it should be looking at me mm -hmm. but today i break everything i it, including like feeling good about myself really a core strength of feeling strong and not just from the outside and all that comes from inner work now yeah so so that's where i am I'm, i mean i'm constantly trying to break that teenager feeling bad about myself um uh, and coming to this point where you're really doing a lot of inner work and inner strength right that's over the years that has happened yeah. and how did you nurture yourself through these years i mean what what really um, work for I, you interestingly enough i can tell you the uh, the places that i broke yeah you know and i can clearly see them like i remember after my first flop mm. uh i came uh, you know with this big film and i really thought that i've made it you know this will be my big debut and then i fell on my face and it was my first big slap on my face as a series of many that i've had and it's interesting how you come out of it and you keep getting stronger and you keep working on yourself and you have to keep working on yourself every day it's not just going to i'm right. not saying i'm strong today yeah and i'll be strong tomorrow i might feel bad about something and then i have to work on that again so tell me how was the birthing process like did you because you were you know used to the red carpet the life in the glamour world was it do women hold back to birthing and you know the very natural process that it is to start a family because it's very luring and i mean like it or not but but not everybody has a you know has the same trajectory that they follow after childbirth so um i have to say that i always wanted children yeah. and in fact i remember when i turned 30 i had a full breakdown because i was like i want to get married but there's nobody there you know <laughs> <laughs> like i was really upset uh and 
it was I was up more upset because I had envisioned myself being this young mother. Uh-huh. You know, a young mother in her twenties, and then it became oh, I'll be a young mother in my thirties. Yeah, right. It didn't, and then I finally got married really like you know a little late, and then I had both these kids. Uh, so I always wanted to have children, and I was trust me, if I'd found the right guy earlier, I could have had the biggest film in the world. It wouldn't have bought. I wouldn't have cared because I wanted to have kids. Uh, and Akshay will tell you that. Um, he wanted when he proposed to me he wanted to marry me a year later i made him marry me a month later <laughs> then he told me we'll have kids after 2 years and i was pregnant within 4 months wow so <laughs> she's like super speeded everything i don't know i was focused i yeah. was like that baby has to happen and even with the with my second one with naira i took time to lose my weight and to mentally come to a space where i'm happy again because i had a lot of postpartum with hans and uh, once i came to a good space was when i decided to get pregnant with her so there's never no anxiety no fear that there is going to be the work which i am known for and i'm going to leave that behind for a while so there's no anxiety there of course there was anxiety there was a full breakdown yeah. after hans i put on so much weight i did envision i'd get back to work within a year and it didn't happen because i was really huge and uh, it broke me into pieces and i had to really pick myself back up and then i just told people oh i've i'm i'm out i have retired i don't need to do this but internally i i thought i had failed myself mm-hmm. uh which is wrong because now when i look back i hadn't failed myself yeah. i became a mother and i just slowed down yeah. and my body didn't keep up yeah which is why with the second pregnancy i have been gung ho i've been very strong and my will to be positive has been uh something that i've worked on a lot yeah You have not followed the forty-day confinement no. period. Clearly, the second time around. No, Do you even no. believe in all of this? Um, I believe that uh, there are certain things that are right. For example, the body is un- has undergone a lot of stress. Correct. Right. So maybe in those forty days, it's to just make sure that the mother recovers and the child, you know, is very small. Yeah. So you know, you just need to protect the child from maybe germs and infections. Factors. And look yeah. at the env- look at the atmosphere around, yeah. right? And especially with the body. Yeah. Uh, so you know, if people do massages and mm. and they eat well, it's to recover because your body has created a life. Correct. A life. Yeah. So it is like you're sapped off of all those energies and those vitamins and. You need to re- replenish. Mm. So maybe to give the mother that some strength, rest. Yeah. Some, so oh, bless you. To give the to to give yourself that rest. But I disagree with the fact that I remember with Hans, I did the forty days, I did the massages, and after all that, I couldn't get back out. Yeah. Because I was like, oh my god, my body is paining, and I'm like, you know, with so with this time, I just played it harder for me. Like in a sense, I became harder because I didn't want to cave into. I need hundred massages a day, yeah. and somebody has to wait on me hand and foot. I wanted to be a little more self, uh, self, right. uh, self sufficient. Right. In a recent uh, Instagram post, you mentioned about moms being shamed when they're not lactating enough. Yeah. And, and it really you know, upsets honestly. me. I'm more yeah, than, like I'm all about breastfeeding, but I I know because um, I've seen friends of mine really struggle. Yeah. And one, she had a proper condition where she couldn't yeah. breastfeed. You know, yeah. it was the size of the breast yeah. or something about the breast. And I remember her crying, and I still remember her saying, "You know, I'm not good enough, and I'm yeah. not doing it my child right." Uh, and I felt like, like I felt so helpless looking at her because I had a very good breastfeeding experience with Hans, and maybe somewhere she felt like, "What the hell? Why couldn't I do it?" Yeah. And uh, so I'm very, very, I'm very passionate about speaking about mothers that cannot breastfeed, and I'm like, leave them the hell alone. Yeah. You know, you're not True. allowed to say anything to them. And there are mothers who go between both formula. And their own uh, yeah, it's breast. their choice. Whatever they want to do. Yeah. I mean, you made that baby, man. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. That's now don't enough. go guilt tripping over no, it, anything no, else. No, no, no. Yeah, guilt. no. But tell me, what are the typical fights that happen between a couple, especially because both are working, and that causes a lot of anxiety to parents as well, right? Which is, you know, you both started at the same stage. One's progressing. One's taking a back seat. Does that ever bother you, or does that ever cause anxiety? So uh, between me and Akshay, I have to say one thing that uh, when I met him for a four for, for the first four years we were dating, he was very encouraging about the fact that I was never around. I was running between one shoot to the next, London to south to south of India. It was like he really was there for me. Yeah. And uh, uh, and that's great because when I got pregnant and then I had to take a step back. Yeah. Um. 
he i i made him front and center because then you know i yeah. had to be there by him i had to be there yeah. by, by like and show him that i can also you know he actually would really help me out then he would understand yeah. as a new new boyfriend i would just never be there yeah you know and as a new boyfriend he was like okay you know what i get it you're working yeah so it's funny how that set the the stage for yeah. me now saying you know what babe now it's your turn you know yeah. I, i'm there for you yeah but do you like bicker and fight about who's going to make the kid brush today and sleep today okay, and akshay uh, is obsessive as a father because okay. he gives hans a bath he is all about giving in fact yeah. this morning he was shouting at me because he you know there was dalia made and my son conned me into giving him chocolates <laughs> and milk don't ask me why and i agreed and hans and akshay as a father which is like no dalia has more nutrition he can have his chocolates right after dalia so it's yeah. like it's he's a very hands on dad and that's that's important because you no, live I'm in very nuclear, lucky and you know this family is chef i knew this about you i would have i mean you know how it's like yeah at the two years yeah. uh, later yeah. ka marriage would have happened like abhi phere kar lo we just get married yeah, there no, right he's very hands on i'm very lucky like that yeah. very very lucky yeah. that's the reason why i don't have help also now yeah she's clearly doing yeah. this so akshay comes back from work at 7 and then hans is all his right and, and naira's all mine Now we're gonna play like a fun uh, trivia with you, which is just answer in a word. Okay, what was the last thing you googled? Last thing I googled was a uh, quick. Okay, wait. Last thing I googled was uh, a manual breast pump. Okay, <laughs> and I'm not gonna ask her why when there are electric ones available. Why would you want a manual one, Samira? Come Because on. I'm going for TED talks, and how am I gonna do in the plane? I'm going to be going for so. Six how hours. does it matter between no, a manual and a? No, I will end gorge. I'm not going to carry the whole electric with me. You have battery operated, na? No, it's easier. I just have to throw the milk. Babe, you have battery operated pumps. Really? No, yeah. but I want something to fit in my bag. It's so small. Really? Okay, done. Chalo. The mud. <laughs> the mud. I literally need it for one. And trip. why would you throw it? How can I keep it? I'm because you get plan. these insulated bags. I need just for one for two five hours. I'm not gonna do it. Okay. It's like I'm going for five hours. <laughs> okay. Okay. I get. It. Why don't you take her with you? Oh my god. We're we're within forty days. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, the last thing she googled, we got. Um, Who is the last person you texted? My husband. Do you write your breastfeeding schedule on an app? Oh God, no. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> Are you an obsessive mother who um, who puts your child on a schedule and lets the child lets the child cry the night out? Oh my God, no! Never, never, never! Not, no. not, not. No. Last thing I ate. Uh, I ate a methi ladu. <laughs> okay, so she does. She clearly does eat <laughs> eat all of that. Um, one thing that you wish there was like a magic potion to right now. I wish uh, I could have my stomach swelling come down because it's really hurting. I thought you would say colic, like substitute no, no, no. the colic. No, I'm selfish. <laughs> I want to take care of me. <laughs> I'm not kidding. No, I've, no, I really right now my swelling is killing me on my belly. Would like it to go. If you had ten hands, what would each of the hands do? Oh my God, ten hands. Yeah. Just like wishful, right? But it's okay. You see, so you want me to each hand? What yeah, each what hand each do? hand do? So why would I need so many hands? You don't need it. No. Like when we ask moms what's that one thing they need, they would say I want like ten hands. For what? It's like multitasks. No, we always want to do so much. But I'm multitasking. I don't need the hands. She's <laughs> really. I don't know. I don't like. I, I it's quite commendable. <laughs> okay. Okay. Have you ever blamed your mindfulness on mom brain? Oh God, all the time. Have you sent your child to a wrong birthday party on the wrong day? No, never. Have you sent your child to a class on the wrong day? No. When it was cancelled. Never. <laughs> She's too good. She <laughs> is too good. It's not that I I I I have uh, a lot of friends who remind me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not that good. <laughs> How have you? What was the last lie you told your kid? Uh, this morning I told him that the chokers were over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Have you? What was the biggest like joke that you know that you kind of created to escape a situation with him? Oh, oh, he really he wanted to know where the baby is coming from, so he actually was trying to tell me that he wanted to see 
So I told him that uh, you know I said Mama's you know. Did you send God send no, down and all no, that? No, no, thank God. No, no, no. <laughs> I just told him that yeah, uh, we got to have this discussion later, and your Papa's calling me, and I ran out of the room. <laughs> okay, so she didn't address. No, the I did not address it because yeah. my my son is one of those show and tell. <laughs> Let me show and tell yeah. for this. I can actually understand. <laughs> Are you part of Mom WhatsApp groups? No, I'm not actually. I'm not not yet. I'm I'm not because not yet, and that's what I said, right? I mean, he goes to the same school. I'm um, no, I'm not on the mom app. I was one for the school last year, but then there were a couple of really uh, crazy rants, and then I got scared and I and I got off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> true what well, i'm quite curious to know after this what was the rant about but true or false without my mom friends i wouldn't survive yeah that's true actually but for me it's my my sister in law and my mother in law they've been my strength to be very honest okay they're my number ones <laughs> okay one thing you miss because you have a baby now um i really miss my uh, so the thing is that this is just the freedom to get up and just go out okay i'm going to like go out right yeah now. i just want to go and have a cup of coffee or i want to watch my netflix show or okay. something okay your son's reaction when he first met your daughter uh he said she's so squishy <laughs> <laughs> he's so squishy mama i was okay. like no 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 please don't squish she's, she's already <laughs> squishy and she's too soft <laughs> okay five things in your baby's diaper bag you can never do without uh water wipes uh, hand sanitizer uh, diapers uh and uh what else a, a, a changing mat and uh, a burp cloth for sure right yeah. send a picture of your belly to your husband just to show that it was growing first time i i did everything from read an app to tell him which vegetable it is resembling it like at what stage and what we we we've all done that okay. yeah oh it is now an avocado size <laughs> <laughs> and now it is turned into a turnip like you forgot the p huh it's p like yeah, yeah, the you p the p. p okay and my husband will be like yeah yeah this time i did nothing <laughs> okay uh said you're said because you're not a woman you'll never get it to him like you're not a woman you won't get it Never. You've never said that. No. Oh no. my God, she's really sweet. No, no, okay. I mean in other ways. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have you ever wondered how my husband can be more tired than I am? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Okay. I, that is one thing I take off on Akshay <laughs> about. I'm like, dude, you can't imagine the multitasking going on. Okay. Like, yeah. Yell at my child when no one can hear. No. Okay. Tell my child, don't do that multiple times in a day. Oh, uh, that I'm saying it hundred times all the time. Okay. <laughs> Ate the chocolate my child was waiting to eat. Uh, actually, she has a freezer yeah. full of the yeah. chocolate stash. Have you dug in yeah. when he's not around? Yeah, for sure. It's okay. half, half is mine. Okay. Dozed off in the washroom after a sleepless night. I have dozed off while feeding her. Okay, that's of normal. Course. Okay. <laughs> Try to scare my child with the mom voice. All the time. Okay. Five times a day, at least. Okay, perfect. You have been incredible, and now we're gonna let you go because Naira is back to being angsty again. But thank you so much. This has thank been incredible, you. Samira. Yeah, I'm so yeah. glad. Yeah.